show up on the GPS is unworthy of global positioning. That's the whole point. Get off the grid, right? Hello? I'm thinking this thing doesn't take credit cards. Sign says closed. We're looking for, uh, what's it called? Tillerman Road. I have to get you there. Getting back. That's your concern. Oh, this is awesome. Whoa. No way. Right, Cabin in the Woods. Now, this is going to be a very special review because it's going to be in two parts. We're going to give you a long review. But before we do that, in order to spare you from a spoiler-free review, we have to do a quick summary review. And I'll just go out here and just say you have five teenagers or young adults that go out into the woods in this cabin. They get killed by a horrible force. And the movie's awesome. <laughs> you know, that's all you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, wish, I, I would go far as saying uh, bad motherfucking badass. All right. <laughs> well, that's, I, I, I will I will parry that and say that Cabin in the Woods made me drop Lincoln logs in my pants. There you go. That's, it's, you know, written by Joss Whedon and, of course, who's who's doing the new Avengers and has done lots and lots of stuff. That's awesome. And then Drew Goddard, who wrote uh, Cloverfield and what else did he write? Uh, he uh, God, now you're going to put me on but He wrote episodes of Lost, episodes of Buffy episodes yeah. of Angel, but uh, they've gotten together to write, and like you said, go by what you said. A bunch of teenagers go out in the woods, party. There's a dumb blonde, there's a stoner. It's all these guys go in the woods, and one by one they get killed. That's all you need to know, at except this... that it's one of the best horror comedies you'll ever see. Yeah, at mm-hmm. this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and get my rating for those of you who are sticking around for the short review. I'm not going to even give away what problems I have because that might even be a spoiler. But I'm going to say a very high full price. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna echo that very high full price. I think I'm going to go better than sex, guys. I'm Good sorry. Lord. I'm sorry. Like that, I've never been so elated in a movie theater. It's been years since I've been that elated in a movie theater. I felt like someone had slipped me ecstasy. Plus, wow. your, wife, your wife just kind of lies there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that oh, is... Where's his phone call now? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, and, uh, you know, you. Uh, I think Cole's going to go a little further than you. He gave it whatever. What, what was that? A, a badass motherfucking badass? <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> sorry, yes, people. No. I'm a little drunk, too. No. I've been at South by Southwest. <laughs> this is a South by Southwest review. We're covering the film festival, and we've seen two movies that we're going to review for you so far, and this is one of them, and this is one of the highlights of the festival. It opened up the festival. Yeah. And co-host, what, what, what would you give this? I'm going to say better than sex, right? Well, this is this was definitely uh, one of those like just shining, glorious moments where you find one film in a film festival that really blows away every expectation you have, yeah. a- everything that you could have possibly imagined. As soon as you first sit down, you're like, all right, entertain me. And, and, we- and, and this one fucking just blew it out of the water this, th- this one was like a goddamn horror movie orgasm all up in my face so this for me is a better than sex yeah totally period. and the thing is like we've been waiting for this movie for what two years three years it's been pushed back and put on shelves and so i mean the, the anticipation was exceedingly high and yet somehow it surpassed all of our expectations yeah i oh, love yeah. that you nailed it when you you tweeted that earlier today you're like have you ever been there that movie that you're actually at that point you're like well, my expectations are so high for this, I know it can't possibly live up to it, so I might as well just go with the flow and hope I have the best time I can anyway. And then it just completely demolishes you well past what you possibly could have pictured. Cabin in the Woods is indeed Well, that. let me yep. say this, too, because right now I'm actually kind of shocked that the both of you, and I'm talking to you, Corey, and you, Cyrus, what I have not that? given this... A fucking better than sex. That's because I've oh, had sex. Because, because, <laughs> Again, uh, well, yeah. cordially, well, yeah. fuck you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm saying that just because of the discussions that we've been having about this movie, which we haven't had a discussion about this with any film in the longest damn time. Well, I, I will get to that. And I, I would love to elaborate on that and tell you to go fuck yourself. You, you, but better, you, you better to, you dumbass. <laughs> you, 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 but to do to tell you to go fuck yourself would actually spoil the movie for, yeah. for some people. So, yeah, you it's, know, it's pretty close to Better in Sex. I'll give you that. But it yeah. doesn't quite put my finger, put its finger in my ass when I come. So, it's almost there. <laughs> wow, yeah. damn, yeah. man. <laughs> you had fun with that. What, yeah. Is not everybody do that? extra for that? <laughs> Jesus, I ain't been raped by a movie before. <laughs> well, let me change that. Yes, I have. You saw the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to do is I'm just going to give a little bit of uh, a background here. The, the reason why 
you probably haven't heard a lot about this movie and it is a benefit to you is because the movie has been on the shelf for a long time from the Q and a that we heard MGM when they, when, when the studio, I guess when they, when they, they went, they went under. They, yeah, yeah, exactly. They, there were a lot of movies that they took with them. Uh, James Bond movie that was in progress, some other movie, and this one was The done. Hobbit was yeah, another one. That's right. The that's negotiations with The Hobbit. That's so damn long to get yeah. The Hobbit. And then this one right here was completed. And that got put on the shelf for a long time, unlike the previous two movies. And so now it's finally being released by Lionsgate. And because it is a movie, I went in not knowing anything about it because it works better without knowing a thing about this movie. It, 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 it is so full of surprises that we can't say that much. And, and that's a shame because it's one of those movies you want to really scream and tell all your friends about. But just doing that, like just ha- I'm, I'm, I'm the same as you walking in, had no idea, had no idea it had been shelved since 2008, I believe. Uh, didn't even see a trailer, single trailer. But every moment of that movie, it, I was like, OK, well, uh, wow. Well, you know what we're going to do? <laughs> that's, see, that's what we're going to stop because, see, this is. This is the kind of Negro I am. See, I, I, I like to, I like to, I, I like to consider the audience out there. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the experience for, especially the experience that I have. So we're telling you right now. I don't want to hear no comments on the site saying spoiler and you spoil this. You talked about that. I'm telling you right now. Cut it off. Walk away. Close your ears. Say la la la. Whatever. Do not listen beyond get this point. Out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. White people get out the house. Even though you're gonna stay, but no, you've been told. <laughs> it's like so, you fucked up already. Yeah. So from this point on, it's gonna be spoilers. That's peculiar. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep listening. I hope there's no spoilers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, honey, there's a bloody spoiler in the toilet. I, 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 I think say, we'll stay. I want to <laughs> say one thing about real quick before I lose about what Co said uh, because the last movie we reviewed also was shelved since 2008. If you remember, Eddie Murphy's a thousand, <laughs> a thousand words. words. Uh, and uh, there are no Shaq references in this film. <laughs> no. this is, they kept joking uh, where Joss Whedon kept saying, I'd like to think of this movie as timeless, perhaps. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is, it's kind of true. This is like you could have put out this movie 20 years ago and it yeah. still would have been mm-hmm. like, you would, there's yeah, no date yeah. one way or the that, other. That is the great thing about yeah. this film. There's This movie it has it touches on themes and certain tropes in movies, especially horror films, that – We've made fun of them so much now that for the for the near future, that's going to last for a long time. So please, please, God, please walk away right now. And if you want, but however, if you're the type of person that doesn't mind spoilers, or if you've seen the movie somehow and you want to hear a nice discussion about the film, then go ahead and stay. I'm giving you three seconds to get your ass up and walk away. One, two. Three, you fucked if you stay on. Don't okay. blame us. Hold on, hold on. You know there's that one now asshole. Now that those motherfuckers yeah. are gone, hold on, hold on. I got some shit I want to yeah. say about. Them. You know, you know that there's that one asshole who's still hanging on just so he can bitch about it. I went to go take a piss. I didn't know you guys were gonna spoil the movie. Yeah, what the fuck? Are they gone? Are they gone? Get okay, the fuck let's out actually of here. Review the Avengers. Yeah. 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 We no, saw, no, yeah, we no, saw no, the no. Avengers. We saw, don't tell anybody else that we're the Hulk the was awesome, man. <laughs> actually, here's our worst of uh, 2000. I loved it when Spider Man <laughs> showed up in Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. <laughs> now you know what? The, now here's the deal about this movie. They describe it as genre bending, which means that they've taken one genre in here, and that is the slasher film. The teenagers that go out into the woods. They're told not to go. You have the sex fiend. You have the nerd. You have the innocent virgin. You have the jock. All of them die in ways that you expect them to die. All of it works on that horror movie theme that you expect it to work. Except the movie opens up with something that throws you off. Wait a minute. There's there's this company that's watching these people setting up every scenario that they're in. They have their hands and everything. They know the outcome of most of this. What do they have to do with anything? And it turns out that, and without spoiling too much here. Yeah, because this is like the first 10 minutes yeah, of the film. Yeah, it turns out that there is a reason why that they are controlling these kids. There's a reason why you in every horror movie that you see, people say dumb things like, hey, let's split up. There's a reason why there's a virgin yeah. there. There's a reason why we have comedy relief. What that reason is? Well, even for you people who have stayed here, that's too much of a spoiler. But let me just tell you something. What they do here brings an element of imagination that I love seeing in, in, in movies, especially, genre, especially genres that we've seen over and over again, that it makes something old refreshing again. This is a horror comedy, and what they bring to it not only works on a horror level, and believe me, it works on a horror level too, maybe not a scary level, but a fun level. Absolutely. But it's yeah. also 
a great comedy too. Well, here's the thing: like a lot of people, you know, you're automatically going, "We need to talk about Scream if we're going to talk about this too," because that was the last real film that said, "Okay, we're self, we're dealing with a smart audience that's aware of horror tropes, and we are discussing those." But the difference is, Scream just goes, "Hey, that's a horror trope. You recognize that?" And this goes, "Hey, that's a horror trope. Now we're going to explain to you in detail why that trope yeah, exists yeah. and yeah. what that, purpose it serves." That's a horror trope. Now we're going to take it apart and show you every individual cog <laughs> yeah. and frame inside of it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's you know you can't compare it to Scream anymore once you realize that because it blows Scream out of the goddamn water in those terms. Yes. Sorry, Wes Craven, you don't own the most meta horror <laughs> film anymore. <laughs> yeah, so that's what you have here. The movie starts out. It, it's as like we say, it starts out with this company, and we don't know what that's about. But then it goes into the the the, the genre that we are familiar with. We got these kids. We have Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth at who's Thor that we know. Now to show you how old this movie is. He's still beefed up, but compared to Thor, he's fucking skinny, man. Yeah, I, 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 I think it was at a point where he had no fucking clue. It's, all, it's almost like you want to scream at the at the, at the screen and go, "You're gonna be fucking Thor, dude!" Yeah. <laughs> you have you so don't much. Even so, know it yet. Yeah, you yeah, have we, so much to look forward like to. From the future, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be in the Avengers. <laughs> we got this picture of him in the Avengers that's fading away if we don't tell him. Yeah. By the way, I gotta be tell real people. Real nice to Joss Whedon is all oh, yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I gotta tell people. People are probably saying, "Man, Leon sounds funny." We have Brian Salisbury. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Hey. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. Oh, you got to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm iconic, filling in for, for yeah, Leon this time. Choking around. out old, old fumes. Yeah, we don't have to pay you in pork rinds either, so that's great. Yeah, I, I just accept money. It's the craziest <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, you're expensive, man. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but we have some other people that you might not recognize. Chris Hemsworth is because we see him from Thor. This was early on. On. Four years ago, people. We have other people that you may may not recognize, but definitely smaller name actors. Uh, Kristen Connolly as the Virgin. She's Anna, hot. Oh, by she's the way. fucking unrated. Yeah. So you know, you know, she's wild. Anna Hutchison as Gorgeous. as the slut, the whore. And then you have uh, Fran Kranz, who's very funny in the movie as the comedy relief. He's from people recognize him if they saw Dollhouse. He played sort of like the main sort of tech geek scientist. Oh, that, that show him? who was very much the comic relief of that. Okay, and if you can guess that Crim uh, Hemsworth. Is the Viking god in the movie? Yeah. He's like, no, he's like, he's he's the jock. But all the th see, the thing is, is that all these people are cool, even though they're stereotypes. They're not playing to the types that we see in normal horror movies or slasher films. Right. So that's part of the conceit there yeah. is that like this company has so much control of this situation for reasons that we don't want to go into here that they take these people who are just really real seeming people, normal people, and manipulate them psychologically using drugs and all sorts of other stuff so they fit the horror See, movie and I, I think that's one of the most clever criticisms <laughs> of, of the repetitiveness of this genre is that they actually have to change these characters – uh, physiology to make them into these molds. Like, they have to biologically affect them before they become these stereotypes that most writers just go, oh, well, this is how this well, person it, is. It, yeah, and it, wor it works in this movie because watching it, I'm like, okay, wow, the, uh, these characters seem very much Josh Whedon written type characters. So... You're like, okay, well, how are they going to work in this situation? Because it seems that they're pretty self-aware of too, what's going on. Yeah, too and, smart to fall and, for and, that. And shit. then, like, yeah, then seeing <laughs> yeah. what this corporation does, you see them get turned into the archetypes that you are so so familiar with. Even though you're like, okay, this, well, I'm, I'm glad this is a nice change of pace. But I just love how the movie slowly shows you them becoming the, those characters that you know. Definitely. It's like, okay, here's where they make all the dumb moves. And, yeah, and, and, and I love how they just make so perfect, so much perfect sense in, in, while you're watching it. And so many of the jokes that are inherent in that setup that play off of that end up being really organic to the plot itself. So they're not just like throwaway lines. Mm -hmm. There's a whole big thing that is inherent to the whole story that has to deal with the stoner and like how they are trying to manipulate him. There's one of the funniest bits in the entire yeah. film. And, and yet, like I said, for another a lesser writer, it just would have been a throwaway line. And I love the fact that they're like, when Chris Hemsworth gets into like alpha male mode, they're like, He's a sociology major. Like, what the fuck is he <laughs> yeah, doing? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's the thing about it. I forgot to mention Jesse Williams, who, granted, he's very handsome for the, for the intellectual, but he's the yeah. intellectual. It's like, why is the intellectual hanging with the jock? But whatever. They seem to be really cool with each yeah, other. They're but just yeah. normal people. Yeah, but when they get to the cabin, it's just kind of like, hey, man, why are you such a pussy, man? Like, why are they fighting each other? But then you realize, like, yeah, this, this, this company is behind all this. And I should say that when the movie opens up, we have, like, really two great leads here. We have Bradley Whitford as one of the guys who's the architect behind this whole thing, who's one of the head guys at this company. And then you have 
Richard Jenkins, one of my favorite actors today, who's he's great. Yeah, yeah, who's who's also he he's his uh coworker and they they sit there and it's so fun to see them it's like they're watching the horror movie that we usually watch. Exactly. And they're what they're taking bets, yeah, you know, yeah. they're, they're waiting for yeah. the girl to take a top off. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's almost like there's a there is some sort of, and I hate to use this word, but there's some sort of meta social uh, message here about how we watch these movies. You well, know, it's like it's like they're 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 playing the writers and, and the directors exactly. of this movie. That the, we're about yeah, to they're see. the yeah. voyeurs, exactly. the writers, yeah. the, the, Which the, is the architects yeah. of the script, whatever you want to call it. There's so many different levels that you can identify with them on, and you go back and forth. Like certain characters, you want to see them die, but yet. You, you don't. don't. You don't. Yeah, it's like yeah. kind of like that person has to die, but that that character has so much heart and spirit. They, I, make, them, they make these characters so likable, which is the biggest flaw of a lot of horror movies. Because the thing is, you want to make all these characters likable. So when they get it, you're like, oh man, that sucks. I really like that fucking dude. Well, yeah, and they, <laughs> they push that to the extent here where they tried to kill off one of the likable characters and they couldn't. Mm-hmm. He had to come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, mentioning all that, I have to say one of the biggest stars in this movie. Uh, uh, that it's not an actor, but it, it it's the actual Evil Dead cabin, the actual yes. Evil Dead cabin from the tunnel they first enter in Evil Dead Two to the actual cabin, which is they, the the director said this at the Q and A. That is the exact same cabin from Evil Dead Two. It is the cabin. Yes. It is the fruit cellar. It's like we we got we got just pictures for what that looked like, and we told our guys make it. Yeah, just make it. Right yeah. Now. yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and it plays a big part in the movie, and it sets up like the atmosphere so well, and just and, and it gets you giddy because you're like, oh wow, okay. It, it was like watching. An Evil Dead, Evil Dead Four. I'm like, you know, they don't even have to make another Evil Dead movie. After, and and after at this point, this. it's almost <laughs> pointless. I can only imagine like Raimi and crew seeing this and going, "Fuck, fuck, God damn it. yeah, I know." <laughs> call, call up the goddamn lawyers right now. <laughs> I know. It, yeah. I can see Sam Raimi call up Josh. We what the fuck, man. I know, dude, you like, asshole. Fuck me. What's yeah, up? I know. It's like when you That's build my house, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, it's like when you build a new car, right? Your car company. Yeah. You're not allowed to make the Tucker car. You're not allowed to make the one that they actually can make. No, that's mm-hmm. got to come out 30 years from now because it's in incremental steps and with this it's like they made that super future car and there's that motherfucker no flies no, yeah, no more movies that they can make between those and then Sam Raimi was like Eddie Murphy this is my motherfucking house god damn it or more appropriate that's my motherfucking cabin bitch. you tell Sam I said have a coke and a smile and shut the fuck up it's my house you just watch this I know, I know, I know. but no they, it's, it's amazing man what they did and see now we get into the discussion here of how this movie now I, I I hate to think this way because you know I hate I hate to throw myself in, into this uh, category with you nerds right here you know because I'm, I'm I'm just cool now like yeah you know but I, I I'm, a, I'm they're a, still gonna fuck you even if you call yourself a nerd now you know that's all changed right? I know I know. I know but I, I'm gonna admit right now are in the I, closet uh, nerd right now is talking nerd. you might, I might get more tail if you come out as a nerd <laughs> I know that nerd singing fucking uh, R Kelly I'm trapped in the closet but you know I'm gonna come on out. I'm gonna come out and say I'm a, I'm a little bit of a fanboy. I, I, I see. I, I knew this about myself. I had a long talk with myself after Scott Pilgrim came out, and I said, "Corey, how do you know all this shit that's in this movie? You know, all this nerdy <laughs> shit. You know, quit, quit, quit front, man. You know, you you fucking geek like everybody else." And I was it tough to tell your parents? <laughs> I haven't come out to the, fuck. Man, why'd you have to say that? They listen to this shit, man. <laughs> I'm just old now. <laughs> it goes my inheritance, but but it's, man, they, <laughs> you get it out of my house. You're a you, nerd. I, I wish you just fuck a guy. <laughs> you broke my heart, Corey. You're not my son. <laughs> what are you wrong? Can't have no black nerds. I'm your uncle. Get the yeah. fuck out of my house. They'll, they'll, they'll just go. They'll just go. At least he's not gay. All right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm ready to stick your dick in a man's mouth. How yeah. dare you? Get out. Of my home, but no, I and the reason why I draw that parallel from I, I saw Scott Pilgrim, that's where I was like, Man, I love all this shit in this movie, I recognize this stuff. And I had to think to myself, Then, fuck, man, but if I recognize, you know, how many other just mainstream people are going to see Scott Pilgrim and not get all the video game references in here and comic book stuff and all that? And I hate to say it, but I had the same feeling about this kind of movie. This is such a fanboy geek film that the reason why I really believe that it took so long even after MGM shut their doors, is that 
no one knew how to market this movie. Yeah, you're right. Because, I mean, the part of the problem is that we have entered the era where it is about niche programming. Niche programming for any niche is big enough to make money now. We shouldn't be worrying so much about everything for everyone. I mean, look at the fucking video game market. Those guys aren't worried about making games that yeah. everyone can love. They make games that are for niches, and they make billions of fucking dollars because they know how to sell it to that market that does indeed exist and has the money to spend. Lionsgate, they're going to probably do what they always do with this kind of shit they're gonna fucking go uh i don't know we'll put it out in a really limited run of like 500 in theaters. fucking april yeah, yeah. Right. April. <laughs> i know another and, and april barely, sacrifice yeah, to the gods and barely market <laughs> in commercials yeah. we probably won't even put a trailer on g4 like we should you know yeah and, and, just, and that's the that's the thing that sucks is they do have lightning in a bottle here and they're oh, not yeah. going to promote it the way they should because unfortunately they are lionsgate and for whatever reason They've done this before where they've had great – like, look at Kick-Ass. Yeah. Lionsgate had Kick-Ass. They had no idea what to do with it. And and it's going to be the same thing here. It's like you, you don't understand. You really do have something great, but you need to get it out there. Because the, the, th- the one advantage it does have is that horror movies, if you promote them at all – do not have that much of a problem making money at the box office. No, no, which I was about to say that that, that is why you know I have a, a, a little glimmer of hope for this film because the one thing that you can say about horror fans is that th- out of any other genre, the, the horror fans are loyal to the fucking core. We will see I mean, shit. Yeah. I mean, I know, theater. I know old <laughs> people. I know old people that go see horror films because they are just that. Th- dedicated to it which is why i think old people shitty- are horror films yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I i do i do see them like you know going to see something like this because i mean if that there's a reason why the shittiest of horror films make the biggest money on the opening week is because people want to go and people want to just be blown away by it and i'm hoping with this that the word of mouth will really start to travel it, it, and hopefully those big audiences that are going to be there at least for that one weekend are really going to do the promotion that Lionsgate yeah. refuses to do. Well, I think it's horror movies are such a, a uniquely constant visceral experience and a good theater experience. I mean, this is the darkened room. You're there with your date. Shit starts happening right off the bat. And the reactions are very, I mean, they're very emotionally provoking, generally speaking. It's not like almost every other genre, you got to wait for that shit to happen. Yeah. Or it's like, bang, bang, bang. This takes that and does that. In fact, so if anyone's confused and think this is just really, really cerebral and dry, no! no. It's this really is not. constantly a horror film and a self-aware horror film at the same time. Like, right. it's two films, really, in working a weird, yes. sort of way that eventually come together into one. You're, you're, you're so right. It's like, it's like, I think about Dust From Dust Till Dawn, uh, where you had two separate movies that, you know, one, one started and had an end, and then the next one started and end. Where this this one, it, it, it manages to to marry the two so great that you're not even aware of that until the the very end of the movie. It's like a Russian nesting doll. Like you think you've got one thing figured out, and then you step back and like, shit, <laughs> yeah. it's in a bigger one. Yeah. Shit, it's in a bigger. What the fuck? Shit's getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that is true. And I think that listen, there would be a simple way to market this movie. Now, granted, some people are going to be feeling ripped off and I don't mind if they do because I think if some people are willing to are willing to take a risk they're going to see a good movie just sell the movie as a typical slasher film that's all you got to do from the, from what I little I heard about it that's what I thought it was but I heard right. but you know what it's something greater than that so yeah some people going to walk out and be like man what's all that funny shit that happened later on the movie I don't understand that shit you know it's like okay you, you you're a fucking dumbass all right you know <laughs> you're the one that deserves to get ripped off but for most people if they really just want to put this out like, hey, got kids go out in the woods, get hack and slashed, and that's the that is the trailer, that's the preview, that's the word of mouth. Make the money. You know, the the, the people are gonna be upset or the people are gonna be upset. The people see it and get more out of it, they're gonna like be happy about it. And then the studio's gonna make its money, the movie's gonna be viewed like it should. I think it's it's as simple as that. I think the general horror audiences that aren't expecting anything weird are going to love this anyway, though, because like I said, it doesn't talk down to anyone at all. And it's not too cerebral. It's smart, but it's not stuffy at yeah. all either. Well, and, and I think that they're going to see it expecting maybe a regular slasher, which they still do get. I mean, there is very much a regular slasher film inside of all this other movie. Uh, they're going to get that and so much more. And they're going to walk out going, 
that was an experience I didn't expect that I still had a lot of fun and it paid off in every way the horror movie I was hoping to get yeah. see did. I mean, you sell it as like, hey, here's a horror movie, a bunch of teenagers, uh, girls getting naked, Chris Hemsworth with his shirt off. You're going to get like guys and girls from middle America going, yeah, we want to see this Saturday night at the movie theater. See, and that's the thing. And they're missing the golden opportunity here, which is that given when this film came out, uh, well, the, the thing is they have Joss Whedon. They have the director of the Avengers writing this movie. If they put that on the poster, not to min- not at all to minimize what uh, Drew Goddard did, because as a director and a co-writer, he fucking knocked it out of the park. But you put from the director of the Avengers on this poster. That is yeah. true. You are mm-hmm. going to bring in thousands and thousands of people. And you know, I like to say, I like to say, yeah. I, I like to say that that you know that, that that's that's a good thing to, to mention. But I know at least the past few years, I know I know at least a dozen people that like to stay away from Josh Whedon because he's become such a like a geek icon that it's like you know I, I'm annoyed of that guy. But see, that's why I'm you don't put his name Angel on. You and, just yeah. put from the director okay. of the Avengers. That's but, the key word. But right what if there. you get that one dumbass and they're like, "Where was Iron Man? I didn't see him. I didn't see no Hulk." <laughs> there will be movie. a Paranormal Activity sequel for that. <laughs> yeah. <too>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no matter Man, what that man should do, be executed on sight. <laughs> no matter what you do, there's always going to be a moron who's going to yeah. go. But I was expecting this other thing, and I'm angry because but, I didn't get you know, it. Like the look, guys who went to see the artist and got mm, mad. Yeah. Because it was yeah. a silent film. Yeah. Well, they weren't talking. Well, just thinking about the marketing of this, I'm like, you know, after watching this movie, I'm like, wow, you know what? Somebody could market this, but you'd almost get it confused with like a real clever like commercial that you see during the Super Bowl where you see a bunch of horse scenarios and then you realize that there's, you know, there's a puppet master, you know, pulling all the strings and, and where you're like, oh man, that's really clever. I wish somebody would make a movie out of that idea, that small little tidbit of an idea. And I'm like, wow, you know, they probably could market this movie in some way where they do give you idea like, Look at these guys who are laughing in the background at these teenagers. I don't it's, get it. You know, yeah, where, <laughs> what? Where you think like Puppets. you know you you put you put all the highlights. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't see no Muppets in this movie. You, know, you put all the highlights of, of of a horror film in there just so like okay he, here here is some here are the uh, money shots here are a few of the money shots. I, I really think if somebody had the balls to to do something like that, I think that kind of marketing would work. Well, you know what I had I just have to say is you know speaking of the money shot, I think we've all just been doing one big circle jerk over this movie. Oh, we bukkake. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's there's yeah. a big puddle of sperm right in the middle of the floor where we just like just jacked off. All but of our hair thing. is really shiny. <laughs> yeah. 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 And well, thanks for putting your finger in my ass. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate and my it. pores <laughs> feel so much cleaner yeah. now. But you Pro know, V, who needs you? <laughs> <laughs> but I know that when we started out. At least co-hosts is over there, over there, like uh, uh, looking at us, talking about what's wrong with you guys. What problems could you possibly have with this movie? Yeah. What I'm curious to hear. Don't tell me your problems, Cyrus. What, what, well, we're gonna tell you. Anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna draw a line in the sand. I know, yeah. Oh, let me draw a line in this yeah. puddle of sperm right here. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is your What is your problem with the film? I'm not sure I have a problem with the film. You just said you did. <laughs> oh, now you gonna make me look like a, like an asshole what right now? I, 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 I had a problem with the film. Fucking through Pull the you strings. Said, okay, why would you not give it a better than sex? Oh no, because like I've had sex and it's still better than almost any any movie except the dark knight so that's, that's a movie it. unto itself but we're not gonna get <laughs> into that man you, you are man so you just leave me out when here he like, doesn't oh. have a girlfriend we will ask him again <laughs> yeah. i know oh, that's right he got when himself I'm, a little chippy now yeah. so i'm feeling cynical and bitter yeah. Yeah. honestly well. if, if it, like it's the the five it's five stars if you'll okay for the record so. out of what out of five it's five out of five okay then I'll, that would be a i will say that my problem with the movie is that even with it bringing in all these elements of surprise in there, all the, you know, bring, kind of bringing in one genre and then one other story. I won't even call the story, this other story a genre. I just say it's just a subplot that they've managed to m- meld into this, this genre that makes it something completely different. Even with those two things together, there was a point where, wow, you got two things going on. You put them together. You're surprising me for a while, but now this has become a, a one note joke. At what point are you going to give me something different? And I and it was just a lull for a minute. But to the movie's credit, I have to say, right when I asked myself that question, all hell broke loose. Yeah, it up. And, and I was like, wow. I was mm-hmm, like, okay. Yeah. Now, and even my mind, I was thinking, okay, you keep dropping these things in the movie. It would be cool to see that. Uh, but I'm not going to see it. And it's like, oh, holy shit, you did it. All right. I know ahead. what you mean, but I was, there was never a point that I felt like it was going on too long before that happened. I, w- I would just go, I hope that's not all there is to this. I mean, it's great and all. There was never a point I wasn't like really having fun and going, yeah, this is good. But I would ask, you know, I, I want 
to love this as much as other people are loving it, and I'm not quite there yet. And then it would go, yeah. oh, you're not? Okay, well, let's add this. And then yeah. you go, damn you, Cabin in the Woods, do I have to pull out my dick and start jerking off right here? Well, you know, I will say the other <laughs> thing is, and I'm, I hate people going to hate me. Now, this is what, this is what true nerds going to be like, man, uh, you were just a, a nitpicky son of a bitch. You were a self-hating nerd is what you are, but yeah, go so ahead. I'm, I'm arguing with that nerd with me in that right now. But, you know, I, I have to, you know what? I have to complain about this movie in order to keep my manliness, you know, my masculinity, my balls intact. But, Too late. No, I know. But, <laughs> but seriously, though, I, there was a point where even the joke in the movie where, because I, I couldn't tell. Okay, is because I felt like there was some bad dialogue at some points, and I was like, "Is this part of the gag, or is this just badly written dialogue?" I couldn't tell. So if I have to ask myself that question, then it's probably not working for me. Oh, I, I never had that experience from this. Well, I did. Well, I actually, <laughs> actually thought even some of the dialogue that was supposed to be like they were they were informing you was part of the trope. Like they were infecting these people to say these dumb things. I still thought, it but was. it was before yeah. that. Like they, like whoever this this company is, they weren't doing anything at that point. They were just kind of letting things work themselves out. Oh. And at that point, I felt like, huh, I don't feel like the acting and the dialogue is very strong right uh, here. But that, they were very. Small you're you're talking about the corporate guys. Oh, do you know what? At the very beginning, mm -hmm. there was a couple lines that felt flat. They oh, tried yeah. to tell a joke, and I know that joke was supposed to be. Very corny, but even the audience, you could hear them like, ah, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, there, there are moments, little spots like that that didn't work. But uh, look, they they more they more than make up for any complaints that I have. As we said at the beginning of the review, this this is a a, 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 a major major full price movie for yeah. me. It's, it's it's bordered better than sex in terms of genre, especially. <laughs> this is, I mean, one of the greatest films of the last quite a few years. I mean, it's a game changer, and I feel bad for absolutely anybody who's making. Any of the sort of metal horror film or just flat out any slasher film because you can't anymore. They even <laughs> joked during the Q&A, you should have just called this the last horror film. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I love about it is it is like throwing it out there to all the other horror films like, all right, fuckers, balls in your court, dropping the bike and walking away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah. It is one of those movies where you watch and after you had the, the experience, you can't help now but want to go back and watch a movie like – Evil Dead Two or Friday the Thirteenth, thinking and, that this and, is going on. Where you can, you can, you can. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is almost like a companion. This will be a companion piece now to all other horror movies, where you can watch simultaneously and like go. There, there are those guys working their magic right there. It lends you know, an extra possible yeah. subtext to all these movies that you uh -huh. can either buy into or not. But it kind of like it will be fun to like go back it's and think so that Jason fun. Voorhees is, is just one of their puppets. Mm -hmm. and it, yeah. It, yeah, it's important yeah. to note. I think that this is not at any point antagonistic to those films. No, I mean it's a love letter, if anything. But oh, yeah. the, but at the same time, it does preclude films made after it using this formula yeah. to a large yeah. extent. Yeah, it does. It does. It, it is very. Uh, but true. It, it's a very, very, very high full price, no matter yeah. what context you take it in. Yeah. So, Brian, yeah. it, it gave me Cabin in the Wood. You better watch out for this guy, Cyrus. He's going to make me look good. I hope you die first. <laughs> <laughs> no, like well, I according said, to you guys, I'm the virgin, so fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> virgin that needs to be fucked. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, <I> mean, <laughs> but, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, but, He's uh, going to do it to your thoughts, is yeah. all I'm saying. No, Just I mean, like, get ready. It, 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 it is, you, like, I mean, you guys have pretty much said it all. And, and it sucks because I would love to say more, uh, but it, it, it is a game changer. It will change the way you look at horror movies from now on, honestly. If you really love this, I mean, it is going to be hard to, to, for you to like really look back at your horror movies and not think about this film, which I find amazing. And uh, like, like I understand your complaints, Corey, but but fuck me, yes, but yeah, but, ah, but yeah, much, you, yeah. sir, yeah, you, you can royally <laughs> fuck yourself. I, I hope at some point a molesting tree gets a hold of you. <laughs> I hope it does. I'm not a hostile person, <laughs> yeah. but seriously, fuck you. Yeah. Oh, I just, wow, that, that's some seriously. I hate to say, I hope you get raped by a tree. <laughs> yeah. oh, dude. By the way, that's a been molesting one of my, tree. By the way, that's been one of my biggest fantasies. So fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> you can see but, that I mean, on, the, on the board in yeah. the movies. The angry molesting tree was one of the things. Oh, no. I thought we were in the spoiler yeah, section. I, I, I no, no, not that. We lied. No, that's like Leon's the spoiler type territory yeah. right but there. But you know, you realize that just because of the fact that we're not giving this better than sex, once people actually see this, they're going to be going, fuck you, Corey and Cyrus. <laughs> we're like, I, it's well, the highest rating possible except better than sex. But I mean, I understand what you guys were saying, but I mean, it, it's, that, it's that pivotal point 
where you're like, okay, is this going to – I mean, I, 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 ho- I hope there is a payoff. I hope there is a payoff because, yes, if there isn't, it's going to be real sad, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin the entire movie. But it takes that major leap that you just didn't really see coming. Uh, and when you do, it, it was kind of like a no-brainer. It's like, wow – what? It's How has one, nobody it, done this? Yeah, it's another. That yeah, is something. It, it, like, yeah, the thing it, is one of those ideas where you walk out hating yourself. Maybe that's why I'm yeah, not giving it, it better than sex. It's like, what the fuck did I think? Of this? I know it, it is one of those things where you get my where, ticket out of here. Where, fuck where, these guys. Where if you're a director, <laughs> it's one of those things. If you're a horror movie director, you're gonna watch this and you go, "Fuck! <laughs> why didn't I think of that?" It's funny. It's one of those things that you and your friends you be watching horror movies and you get high and you joke around about them. And it's the kind of shit you do come up with and laugh. And go, yeah, that would be awesome, but no yeah, one would you ever. Yeah, start writing this but shit no down, would, man? But no one would ever do that. Because <laughs> you wake up the next day and you fucking forget it. Joss yeah. Whedon is the one guy who can actually talk a studio into actually doing it. Yeah, yeah, know? no, no. So th- this is this is definitely uh, better than sex. If, uh, be- if nothing else, it will make you fear the sound of an elevator bell for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying it anymore. Yep. <laughs> actually, people die in so many creative ways in this movie that I'm like, wow, death seems actually kind of fun. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. I get a choose. My own in them that that kind of way. That looks Welcome cool. to being a horror file. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, you disgusting nerd! You out of me again. Nerd. Jo- join us. Google, gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs>